On May 17, 2013, the Storm Prediction Center issued a very low probability for tornadoes, but the good karma obtained from urging a horny toad to find a safer place to bask must have set the odds in my favor. Stay out of the road. By early afternoon, the energy from the scorching sun would be the fuel needed to initiate two thunderstorms, and I was feeling optimism chasing in the wide open spaces of North Texas especially after the previous day's chase in Louisiana. Here we're positioned between the two cells, ready to pounce on the first one to exhibit signs of rotation. By the way, this is what a tornadic supercell looks like in Louisiana. Wow, look at that. Back on our Texas storms, a tight mesocyclone lowered from the base of the northern cell and eventually weakened as the southern cell began to dominate the atmosphere. This storm was located near Oni, moving southwest at 10 miles per hour. This storm has a history of producing tennis ball size hail. On this day, cell motions were slow but deviant, and with no help from the few winding roads, the destructive hail was difficult to avoid. The storm was now exhibiting rapid rotation and base reflectivity revealed an awesome scooping comet-shaped echo. If I can make it to that dirt road, it might be okay. Scattered trees, hills, and a curtain of precipitation made for poor visibility of a possible developing tornado now blatantly evident on radar. In order to get a decent photograph, I needed to get in front of the hook, and a gravel road several miles ahead might be the ticket. Look at that, there it is, big funnel cloud. Shut up. A scenic opening presented a large funnel cloud, and instead of gambling on the visibility ahead, I decided to set up the tripods, kick back, and enjoy the show. Storm Chase was sponsored by Velvet Slipper Radio, powered by the Radio Agogo Radio Network. <laughs> <laughs>